It's too damn hot for a penguin to be just walking around here. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Now watch this drive. All right. Good morning, guys. It is Friday, June 11th. Welcome back to another episode of the Sesh Podcast on Tarpsoft Sports. Today, one of my good friends and the one of the coolest guys you'll meet and it does some of the coolest work I've ever seen, Robert Bork. He works and is the owner of Steel City Paranormal. Loves doing the, uh, the um, other side investigations. How are we, man? I'm good, brother. Thanks. Thanks for having me again. Appreciate you coming by. It's great speaking with you. We uh, we went through Nell's Manor in Grimsby together last yes. year, and I got a real insight into exactly what you do. But take yes. us through, and people at home listening, exactly what Steel City Paranormal is. Um, I, I started the business. Well, I, I had been investigating for probably almost a decade um, before I started this business. And the biggest thing I noticed in my investigations was that what I had learned in watching reality TV shows and the, you know, the movies from Hollywood and stuff that what I was experiencing out live was not what I was being taught from watching TV. So I kind of got frustrated with the whole stigma attached to the paranormal because my experiences were more positive and loving and welcoming. So I decided to, you know what, if I'm going to change the stigma, I'll just start my own business and I'll tackle it from a different angle. And that's what I've been doing. I've been trying to educate people to a different version of the paranormal and, uh, you know, open people's eyes up to a to a loving, more more accepting version of it. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, Hollywood, right? Like I know yeah. um, my fiance and I are, we're sitting here and we're like going to watch the Conjuring movie or whatever. She yeah. likes those scary movies, but those, yeah. those are... Well, the, the thing that people don't realize, and I really learned when I came out with you guys, and we'll get into all of that in a minute, sure. but like, it's nothing like that. It's like you said, it's very, like, the the, the few things we did catch and um, some of the words that you were able to catch in that, it, like yeah. you said, it was very loving and accepting and more yeah. like a, like a happy experience than something that was scary and bone chilling. Yeah, and just bringing... Sorry, just bringing you in under that mindset and you coming in not being afraid changes the whole experience, right? If you go in and you're already scared, you're inviting a negative energy with you. So if you go in with a positive mindset, you attract positivity to you. So you're getting a totally different experience as well. So And, and you're proof of that. Yeah, no, exactly. I remember when I rolled up, I saw Nell's Manor. Um, what a beautiful place, first it off. Is, um, yeah. Everyone that was... Uh, you know, it was just before I think they mandated that you had to wear a mask. Everywhere. Yeah, we, yeah so right, we were just we were right, right there, on we that line. So yeah, it yeah. was nice too because I remember I could breathe the whole night. It was nice, but it was uh, I remember it being real hot in there. But what a beautiful piece of historic property and all yeah. the activity and stuff that goes on there. You know, you can tell yeah. it's a very very positive. Like when you stepped in there, you could tell it was a very positive place. Oh yes, it's very welcoming, very loving. And you can feel the energy in the house without even bringing cameras and stuff in. If you just quiet yourself and walk through that building, you can actually feel the emotions in that place. And it's all positive. It's all loving. And yeah, the spirits that are there want to be there because they love the place. Absolutely. And I do too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, okay. So you start this up. You what, what year did you establish Steel City Paranormal? And that was fully motivated by just the stigma then, yeah? Uh, mostly, yeah. I mean, I've always been on this kind of spiritual awakening kind of journey anyway. And uh, the whole, to me, what the whole lying about the fear and, you know, trying to make money off of fear and stuff really was the cherry on the cake for me. I just thought, you know what, this, this isn't about, you know, making it big and making a million dollars. This is about trying to put truth out there and uh, help educate people. And so in 2017 is when <laughs> I hit rock bottom and said, you know what, I got to do something here. And, and that's when I launched. Yeah. Yeah, though no, that's incredible because I personally used to watch like Ghost Hunters or whatever those whatever those HG TV shows are, you know, like yeah. and there are moments where something you'll hear it or whatever, but you can just yeah. tell the oh what's that? What's that? The camera's shaking. Like it's so yeah, that's I'm what not, I loved about coming out with you. Yeah, there I'm, was I'm none of that. This. And I would love to see a show <laughs> that covers more what you and Judy and all of them were doing that yeah. night as opposed to i know it doesn't do the maybe the same ratings as being afraid of the the ghosts does but it was just i think there's so much better insight to be had through yeah. what you're doing compared to what these hgtvs and all these other life network uh 
you know, quote unquote, ghost shows they're doing. Yeah, it's unfortunate. There's a lot of money to be made off of fear. I mean, if you just look at the way the world is run, that's run off of yeah. fear. That it's controlling, right? It, it works. But that being said, I'm not saying that the stuff on TV is all fake. I'm just saying that because some of it is, what do you consider truth? How, if it leaves you guessing, I mean, it's entertainment, right? Hollywood is entertainment. If you don't entertain people, you don't have a show. That's the bottom yeah. line. So I'm not saying everything they're doing is fake, but if you have to question the narrative, if you have to question the story, if you have to question the evidence, what are you left with? So that, that's the part I didn't like. I didn't want to be left guessing. I want somebody to teach me the truth. And so I decided to be that person, my truth anyway, as far as- Yeah. I, you know. Oh, no, man. I saw the way that you do things. I've heard. I've seen- um, previous videos that you yeah. you've sent me from from previous things now you do your homework and it's real it's uh everything you've shown me is it you know it makes you question what what is that it without does. the fee but there's never there's ne nothing you've ever sent me is theatrical not yeah. one thing it's yeah. just here's what we caught this is what it is yeah. that's why i like it and and it was funny too because because you're that way when i came into nell's manor with you guys and spent the night with you guys it was like I wasn't afraid at all. The only time I got freaked out was you had the teddy bear with the motion sensor right. in it. And, yeah. and I went into the kids' room and that's when it went off the first time I was yeah. standing in the other corner and you and yeah. I were in there just kind of looking. And then all of a sudden the teddy bear lit up and the song <laughs> started playing. That was the only time that I jumped a little bit. But other than yeah. that, it was just such a great experience. Now, you ended up after that going out um, to yeah. where was it? I did a couple of uh, for the investigations for the Brant Brantford Historical Society. We did the um, the museum and archive building. Yeah. And we also did uh, Myrtleville as well in Brantford, which was uh, a very nice place. It's kind of like Nell's Manor, kind of similar. Um, yeah, it was really good. And again, we did our reveals. We caught evidence, showed them they were very impressed. And again, it wasn't it wasn't scary. It wasn't. I find that a lot with museums and, and very old manners and stuff. It's it's usually the, the spirits that are there are there because they, they want to be they there. like being there. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. it's a nice it's a nice environment. Like you said, like if it was comparable to Nell's Manor, it must have been awesome. Now yeah. you talk about negative energies. You've been hunting for twenty years plus. Um ever run into anything negative? And if you do, what's that like to handle? And is it pretty easy to handle? Yeah. Well, the first thing I want to dispel is the fact that negative doesn't mean evil. Evil, exactly. It could you know just I mean, mean they, they I have, died unfortunately. I have, bad, I have bad days just like everybody else, and I get pissed yeah. off, and that makes me negative. Doesn't mean I'm a demon. And it works the same way in the spirit world. You know, we all have good days, bad days, and some people, you know, it doesn't negative doesn't specifically mean that you're you're a demon or something. So when you run into a negative energy it could be just somebody who is frustrated on the other side because they're lost or the way they passed away and they're trying to resolve an issue and it's my job as an investigator to try and get in there in a positive way to try and change that to try and take the negativity out of the the, the encounter and the activity and you can't do that by screaming at something right you don't know their story it, it's it's like real life i don't know your true story i know you but i don't yeah. know your whole life story so i can't judge you because i don't know you that well so for me to stand here and yell at you and scream at you, you're just going to flick the camera off and you'll go away. <laughs> right. But it's the same in the paranormal world. You got to treat things with respect and you'll get respect in return. It's the same way. Well, that's incredible, man. That's awesome. Because you do, like I said, you see these shows. It's so, oh, what was that? What was that? Da -da 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 -da. And, it, and it is what it is, but would you be interested in doing something where it actually showed like the, the proper investigations if anybody ever brought you something like that like do you want to share this story or is this more of a personal journey for you it, it, it'll always be a personal journey for me like i i don't even charge we're, we're a, you know a non-profit organization so i don't charge i would not want to rob anybody of an experience or a chance to help anybody so uh, we do accept donations but other than that we're non-profit um people's people's you know safety and stuff comes first and their concerns come first so i i value that over everything else um, but uh, if somebody approached me, I'd have to think about it because uh, my experience with what I've learned on TV has all been the opposite. So if somebody was willing to gamble with it, yeah, I, I sure I'd, I'd go about it. Yeah, no, that's that's incredible, man, because it is it is unbelievable to see now COVID in Canada. It seems like we're starting to, you know, today, at least you can have a, 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 a something to eat outside with your yeah. friend or whatever. That's nice. Um, things are starting to loosen up a bit. Do you have any yeah. other uh, areas oh. planned? 
I sure do. <laughs> I've been waiting for a year to investigate a few places and uh, I'll, it should be pretty soon. I'll probably be getting a call soon. They've been keeping in touch with me because they're dying for us to get in. Uh, I got a couple of jobs to do in uh, in Burlington. I got a couple of residential places that uh, I have to take care of as well. So all these people have been patiently waiting and so have I actually. So when you get a call from like a historical society or whatever, they just know that it's an old building. Maybe is yeah. it usually someone that's working there has heard something, saw something, or is yeah. it just, Hey, this is super old. So Robert come in here and check it out. And then I want to ask, what do you find are mostly different between residential clients in this, yeah. like, you know, everyday people in their homes versus <laughs> these big old historical buildings and societies or whatever. Uh, the buildings, the museums and stuff, it's always the workers. The workers have experiences because they're there all the time, right? So they, they have the opportunity to see stuff that we don't. It's part of their lifestyle to go in nine to five, at least five days a week. And mm -hmm. so they're, they have time spent in there where they see things that just don't make sense. Um, right. But again, when it comes to the older places, the old families, the old manors and stuff, um, I find with those, as much as I love doing them, um, I find the residential ones way more personal and way more uh, priority for me because at the end of the day, the person that works at the museum or the person, they, they get to go home at the end of the day. These residential places are dealing with something 24 seven. They don't get a break from it. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they're stuck having to live through this. And so my attention is drawn more to them first priority wise, because it's, it's a lot more personal. I have to help these people. You know, they need they need somebody to turn to that they can trust. And I'd like to try and be that person for them. Yeah, exactly. So now when you say the residential people call you with stuff like are they, like, are they more inclined to be scared because of the way that Hollywood and TV have portrayed this All phenomenon anyway? Like, is it Every something time. where they're calling you like in a panic more, yep. more or less? Every time. It's always negative. Every time. And after I investigate, um, it's usually not at all what they were expecting. It's, it's usually an eye-opening experience for them. Um, and I always give them the opportunity at the end when I present them with what I found, if I find anything, um, what they want to do with it. I've had residential investigations where the family or the husband and wife uh, were totally fine living with the spirits, now having the answers and knowing that they weren't demonic or they weren't, you know, aggressive and trying to take over the house. Yeah. They, just, they just wanted to be right? Yeah. They had an attachment to that land or that house and they just wanted a little space in there somewhere. And so they, they learned to live together. And I've had that more often than not. Um, the odd time, um, sometimes I'll bring somebody in through my connections and we'll do a blessing or, you know, try and calm the, the energies a bit. And uh, once you're my client, you're always my client. You know, I'll always yeah. take, try and take care of you. There's, there's no ending to this. I mean, I, I don't have all the answers. I'm the first one to admit that. Um, it's always a learning experience. The, the more I go out, the more I learn. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so that's how it works, right? I try and be as, as truthful as possible and, and give my truth and, and teach my truth. Absolutely. And you know what I thought was amazing? It's like you said, if I find anything. But mm -hmm. what I find unbelievable is we walked into Nell's Manor. It must have been probably, I don't know, 8 o'clock, 8.30 p.m., set up the cameras running nonstop and we're not out of there till 4 a.m. You yeah. have to go through every single frame <laughs> yeah. of every single Piece second of, of video. Not not to not to mention there's audio equipment. There's there's all sorts of different equipment that we'll go yeah. into because I was just amazed at at the equipment that goes yeah. into this. And uh, yeah, it's a lot the of other work the other gentleman that was with us too, uh the British guy, what was his name? Roy. Yeah Roy. Yeah, he's great, and he, yeah. he 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 was explaining all of the all of the equipment just un unbelievably. And it's like, yeah. how long? So that night we do that. You go back and you're you're hunting through all the video evidence. What what's the average time of an investigation for Steel City Paranormal? It usually takes me a month. Um, sometimes the bigger, well, obviously the bigger the location, the more equipment I need. But uh, minimum, I would say at least a month. By the time, from the first time I do an interview with the person to get the story of what they're experiencing, to the actual investigation, to the review of evidence, it's at least minimum a month. So that's a lot of time you're putting in to just looking at, and, and how, and what is it like when you're done, you've gone through a month and there's absolutely nothing. Are, are you upset or are you just glad that you kind of ruled out? Well, you're, you're kind of disappointed because you always want to find something, but yeah. finding nothing is something. And that's in itself a teaching lesson. 
that a lot of the times we walk in and people are like, we debunk 99% of the stuff that we catch, but that's just part of being truthful. Right. And I can't sway from that. I have to stick to my guns. If I started this business for one reason, I can't sway from that. So I have no. to be honest and, and, and tell people that, look, you know, what you're experiencing is not paranormal. It's because of this, 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 and this, and I show them. And then in, in itself, that's very rewarding because they're not scared anymore. So mission accomplished, right? Yeah. And I know from being in the group chat after Nell's man or a couple of times, uh, the girls would send like, Hey, I think I picked up something on audio and, and you, uh, jumped right in. And I mean, I remember there was one clip that you're like, yeah, that's probably something, but there was another clip that we were able to rule out as like a voice in the distance. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and it was, it was really cool to see that. Cause I know like everyone's excited after that. They wanted it to be something, but like yeah. you were quick to step in and be like, no, 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 no. We got to check this through. Yeah. And you did and, yeah. and and like I said, probably the most clear vocalization you had ruled out as something in the background. So that's yeah. when I was like, okay, yeah, this is the real deal because you were like, you almost are looking to prove it false, right? Like that's is that's that my, always the goal, right? Like that is because, my goal. Yeah, that is because my goal. Because then then you're just left with the stuff that you can't prove false, and exactly. that's the that's the paranormal. That question, the whole right? yeah. yeah, that's the definition of paranormal, what you can't explain, right? So, yeah. yeah. So you see the government right now in the States. Um, oh, it's God, funny yeah. with all the pandemic and everything yeah. going on and all the madness that's that. I'm not even going to go into that. We could sit here for five hours talking about how yeah, this jackass has screwed us all around. Starting mm -hmm. with that Fauci guy in the States. He's the worst human being alive. But um, we sit here and... You know, you see what's going on with the UFO disclosure in the states. They're the government starting to show these videos and yeah. drop all this stuff, and they're like, "We don't know where this is coming from. This is crazy." Do you think we'll ever get to a point where the paranormal stuff can kind of come out into the open and be accepted? Because there's going to be people that are going to find this interesting and great, and then there could be people that that could think like, you know, we're whacked for even thinking it exists. There's that crew of people out there too in the world, right? Do you think that'll come to a point where you know? the governments and the, the powers that be are a little more willing to let people in on, you know, what's going on. I mean, it seems like they're starting to open up this UFO phenomenon a bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of leery on this new UFO stuff. That's, and I'm a believer. I've had a couple of experiences myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't disbelieve in a whole lot out there and UFOs are one of them. Um, I, I, the timing of this, it has me putting red flags up. Um, right. In case you haven't noticed, when this stuff started coming out that they were going to leak some UFO stuff was exactly at pretty much the same point where Bill Gates, who has been in the media every single day for the past year and a half, yes. has suddenly disappeared. He's been off the charts, not in newspapers, media, anywhere to be found for the last month or so. Yeah, because of his ex-wife threw so, out that he was hanging out with Epstein or whatever. Exactly. Now, no, now, no. All of a sudden, the guy who couldn't get off TV and yeah. talking about the vaccines is all nowhere to be found. Get, he can't be found anywhere. And and, and, then, then, and then, like he got Fauci's emails too. And it is it is strange, mm -hmm. to, like where the timing of this release it, is it almost from. comes off as it's, it, it almost comes off as one of those elite tactics where they try and distract you from the main thing that's going on in the world to try and put a bigger. Thing in your face to distract mm. you from what is actually going on and it, I'm, I'm, i have red flags with that whole ufo thing as much as i'd want it to be true there, i i'm kind of sitting on the fence with that one yeah me too because it's like could it not just be drones or whatever too like i mean it's it, just because it says ufo that, that's why i'm like and why are all the cameras like every single thing you can barely see the yeah. the object and it's like these are the these are the top military cameras on your on your like top world, you know, pieces of machinery. Like yeah. that that's the that's the picture you're picking up. I I feel that I get where you're coming yeah. from because like yeah, it just, it just you know, a little fishy with me. Yeah, there's a zillion flights. There's apparently just tons and tons of these situations now. They're saying that they've noticed, but yet you can't get a clear shot of anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, either way, I hope that one day it comes to like uh, fruition that, you know, people will be a little bit more open with accepting the idea of life after death. I think people are getting there. Yeah. I, again, it comes down to our, I don't know if the government will always, will ever want actual peace and, and, and stuff because it doesn't pay. There's no, there's no power for them in that. Right. No, there's no, I mean, there's no. If we all got peace, along, right? they, we wouldn't really need that. So, no, exactly. Yeah. 
It's, yeah, there's no repeat. profit in peace, man. There's no profit. Catch twenty two. Yeah, just it like is no profit in cures. Yeah, no profit in cures. No profit. As long in as peace. you're sick, they're making money off you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's better to just keep you on pills for the rest of your life than one quick treatment to figure it out, right? Yeah. Everybody's gotten to that point now. And it's like, you know, human beings are as smart and as in touch with what's going on. And there's so much information out there now that people are starting to figure all this stuff out, right? Like our grandparents yeah. and great grandparents, how the hell would they have known? They didn't have Google. All they had was the TV telling them what was what. Yeah. And and you can tell those are the people that are and the people that raise those people like, I don't know. Sometimes you see people like driving around still wearing their mask in the car and it's all just by like, themselves. Yeah. Yeah. All by themselves in the car. And it's like, these people are so addicted to fear. Yeah. And it's nice to see what you're doing with the paranormal stuff. Cause it couldn't be the opposite of fear mongering. It's absolutely perfect. The yeah. way that you do it. What's the website? Let everybody know where they can find you guys. I'm at steelcityparanormal.com, the actual website. Then I have a Facebook page and Instagram page. Try to make myself as visible as possible. Um, I do consultant work too. Even if you don't want me to go investigate, if you have questions, just send me an, an email at steelcityparanormal at gmail.com. And uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I, it's part of my my job, right? I love doing that. I like connecting with people that like yourself, who's open-minded and willing, yeah, to, man. willing to listen to both sides. I mean, I, I don't claim to have all the answers again, but I'm nope. willing to listen. And that's what uh, the world should be. Just be willing to listen. Yeah, man. Transparency throughout the yeah. investigation with you was incredible. Like, you know, like I said, there was a couple situations people got excited, thought they heard something, ruled it out right away as voices yeah. in the background. Absolutely loved it, guys. If you have any sort of noise, anything like that going on in the house, you want to check it out, you got a weird energy feeling, mm -hmm. go on over steelcityparanormal.com or you said steelcityparanormal at gmail.com. Yep. Fire over an email. Robert, thank you so much, my friend, for dropping by the sash. Great talking with you as always. And hopefully we can get back out once everything's good again because I got like some new GoPros. I got some yeah. equipment now too. So I'm going to rig myself up for one of these. Yeah, tap on the back for you, buddy. You, you were good that night. You were talking. You were doing everything you were supposed to do. You were great. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really enjoyed it, man. It was one of the great, like, you know, one of those experiences I'll take with me for the rest of my life. So yeah. I appreciate you doing that, man. Like I said, I wanted to get you on here too, because it's just the coolest. Uh, you go over to your site too. You got some of the evidence you've caught before. It's absolutely unbelievable. And I saw how you do the process. It's a hundred percent real. Thanks yeah. for keeping it real, man. Appreciate Peace, it. Brother. Peace. Peace.